Hey, good morning, everybody. It's a Friday. It's a cold day. Look, look at the ice. It's got to be in the mid 20s right now. It's supposed to get up to about 40 today. But we got this house floor to do. We've already done the garage and a couple patios here earlier. Now we got to get the house done so they can start building on this. Concrete's here. We're using the conveyor first because the reach, the reach was kind of tough here this morning. So this was the best we could do without a pump. About 7:30 in the morning right now. That poly there, that stego wrap, that's a little frosty this morning. They didn't, they didn't cover it last night for whatever reason i don't know why so it's a little frosty using 4,000 pound concrete today with uh you know it's got hot water in it it's got some accelerator in it it's got some super p in it so we pour it pretty loose he's giving it a little bit more water it wasn't quite loose enough so we're gonna get going Hey everybody, thanks for watching. It's the first week of December up here in Maine and it's it's getting really, really cold as you can see. We got winter from usually December to March, but we still got a lot of these floors to do right outside like this that, you know, the foundations got in later in the year for whatever reason, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are just behind schedule. Um, and now, you know, we got to get some of these floors done and a lot of these builders, they want the floors in before they start framing. It just, especially with the ones with radiant heat like this. They don't want to frame on top of the radiant heat and be walking on it every day and then do the floor afterwards. It just makes it so much easier to, to get the concrete floor in first. But there's a lot of planning that goes into doing a floor like this. Like we've been, we've been planning this for two weeks to do the floor, having to wait for the plumbers to come in and do the underground plumbing, you know, for the bathrooms. The kitchen the utility area and then finish grading the the dirt then keeping it from being frozen and then coming in and putting the, the two inches of styrofoam down laying that down getting the stego vapor barrier over the top of it then putting the wire mesh down getting the heating guys back to do the the radiant heat tubes and then you know us getting our scheduled in here and hoping we have a good day so a lot of planning goes into this Yeah, it's cold. Probably the hottest part for me is just having to wear so many layers to stay warm. Especially my fingers, you gotta wear extra thick gloves and that doesn't make it any easier, but we're gonna we're gonna work our way through this. I gotta go get the laser now and get that set up. What do you guys think of these single floor houses? I mean a lot of retirement couples or people here in Maine they want just one floor they don't want to they don't want to walk downstairs into a basement they don't want to walk upstairs into a into a second story bedroom or anything they just want to live on one single floor um, at in their retirement years and we we do a lot of these here in Maine it seems like where all the all the plumbing and the utility rooms and you know even sometimes the garage are on one single level now this garage has a little has one step up into the house from it but that's not that much difference really so let me just let me know what you guys think do you think that's a, a convenience thing for for living on one single floor like this or do you think you'd rather have a basement with something like this or even a second floor so today we we got out the power screed mbw screed demon we're using the gas powered one today we find as we start using the hot water in the concrete and quite a bit of accelerator in the concrete to get it to cure up that the difference between the gas powered one and the battery powered one that we have is you know if the concrete starts to set up on us a little bit because it's so hot like right now we can feel it setting up the gas powered one has a little bit more vibration to it so it just makes it makes screed in the concrete as it starts to set up a little bit easier for us versus the battery powered one well we tend to use the battery powered one in the warmer months when uh you know we don't have to use hot water or accelerator but this stuff this stuff right here like this load from the conveyor truck it was hot we could feel it you can feel it on your feet when the concrete's hot i don't know if you've ever poured hot concrete before that starts setting up before you even screed it but it just has a certain feel to it and you know that you got to start hustling otherwise you're really going to struggle i've had 
we've had concrete set up on us so fast before in the past that you could you could literally walk on it and barely sink in at this stage right here and you haven't even got it screeded yet i don't know if any of you guys have ever experienced that but let me know down in the comments that's uh that's when you know you got to really start working and get that load down quick um so far this year late this fall as the temperatures have been colder we haven't had one that hot yet so we've been Usually we get one or two a year that we got to really struggle with like that, but we've been lucky so far this year not to have that. Um, but you can see how well that gas-powered Scree Demon works, even when the slumps are a little bit lower than what we normal. I would say for our normal slump, this is probably a, maybe a slump, a slump stiffer than we normally pour, St a little bit drier, maybe like a five and a half six slump versus that six and a half seven slump you see on a lot of my other videos and some of that has to do with just the concrete being so hot using such hot water and using a little bit higher psi concrete i guess we're using the 4000 today versus the 3500 and that's just again it's just to help get it to set up a little quicker the more cement the more cement in the mix um just usually means a little bit a little bit more heat is generated as the concrete cures on its own a little bit more heat means a little bit quicker set time so but you can see how nice that vibrates the concrete as I screed it and then it literally makes bowl floating like a hundred times easier a hundred times faster to bowl float when you have a surface like that versus one where the the surface is really open and, and tearing from the screeding so you get a lot of open, open uh, surfaces. You got to fill up with the bow float. Ooh, it's cold. Concrete sticky too. Usually the 4,000 PSI is pretty sticky anyway. Then you add hot water to it and accelerator, makes it even more sticky. All right, let's go reset, get a little better view over here. So that big section over there is about 48 by 30. This one was about 30 by 26. That, using that power screen definitely makes bow floating a lot easier, I can tell you that. Now on this second truck, we were able to get a little bit like one slump higher. Uh, the concrete just seemed to flow a little bit better, made it a lot easier getting the concrete down to where we needed it. For whatever reason, he just didn't show up quite as hot as that first truck did. A lot of times when they, when they load the bins at the concrete plant, the first load, the first 10 yards, the bins are inside the garage, so in the garage is heated. So all, even the, you know, the aggregate, the sand, everything is warm when they load that first truck. So then you add that really 130, 140 degree water to it and mix it all up. The first load, you know, you might get at 75 degrees when it, when you get it all mixed up and comes out of the chute. Um, and the second truck here might be 68, 69, 70 degrees. So five degrees difference sitting in that drum is quite a bit because when it's all in the drum like that and of the back of the truck it's like a it's like it's just sitting in a big sauna back there <laughs> and cooking on the way to the job and they had about a 30 minute ride to the job today so it's uh it already starts the process you know of setting up before you even get it down but this one here it, it actually went down a lot easier for us so and it did quite a bit of the floor here too it seemed like it looks like you know 20 this is about 2200 square feet total so it's a it's a good size house floor and it just seems like it seems like the second truck went quite a bit further than the first truck and then we don't have quite as much concrete on the third truck so 
you can see the small area we got left to do here with a third truck which kind of makes it good because you know we'll add we add the same amount of accelerator to the first truck as we do the second we kind of want them to set up um, as even as possible when we when it comes time for finishing and then for the third truck you like you don't want to have to wait around for the third truck since it was batched out you know who knows it might have been batched out 30 minutes behind the first truck so when it comes to finishing time with the floor and you get the power trial on it you know you kind of want the whole floor to set up pretty even you don't want to have to wait between loads so if the third truck is has a little bit less concrete on it and you add the same amount of accelerator as the first two trucks you can get that third load to set up a little bit quicker and kind of catch up to the first one and the second one if if you know what i mean there so it just makes finishing the concrete a lot easier you got this section a little bit high you can see harvey in there harvey and jim are helping us today um, but he's having to pull back quite a bit, which, I mean, is okay. It's better than being low and having to push it all up. Because now, you know, Luke jumped in there with Harvey to help us, and then Darren's jumping in behind him, so he can kind of work the concrete behind those guys. And, and that way I can just keep going. I don't have to stop when I'm, when I'm screeding. Get that whole bay pulled right down. And the less I have to stop and start, the easier it is for me to screed and the less chances I'm going to get any any low spots or any high spots in the concrete. That thing's probably right around 40 pounds. Not too hard to pick up and, and put down, but I mean, there's a little bit of weight to it. There's got to be a little bit of weight to it, otherwise it would just float on the concrete and you'd have a hard time getting the concrete level. So there's got to be a a point where it's it's not too heavy but it's heavy enough to screed the concrete the way it should now I I can set that right down on the concrete and it doesn't really sink it just doesn't sink out of sight it's the the screed board is made you can see it's got about six inches of surface area so I can set it right down and it'll kind of support its own weight right there as long as the concrete's not too wet but see that right there so for a five and a half six six and a half inch slump it's not going to just sink out of sight i can just set it down grab the handles and i'm not holding up on it at all that thing's just kind of floating on the surface and i'm letting the vibration when i pull the trigger there i'm letting the vibration you know settle the screed down to the level i need it at to get a flat floor that's basically as simple as it is and then all I'm doing right now is I'm pulling on the trigger a little bit to create the vibration and pulling backwards towards Luke and Darren as they're screeding. You know, just going slow and steady and that's that's what screeding like with one of those is all about and that's how you get it nice and flat. And you can see when when Harvey's running the bull float over it just how flat it is afterwards. Okay, two down, one to go. That went down pretty good with the vibro screed, thank God. I, didn't, I wouldn't have wanted to hand screed that one. The subgrade, subgrade's so bad here. It's just up and down, up and down. That makes screeding even harder. We're getting it. Got just a small piece to go, so. Still feels cold though. There's a little breeze here. You probably can't see it on the video, but. It's a little breeze here. It's making it even feel colder than it really is. You know, you may wonder what makes the subgrade kind of messed up on something like this and why it wouldn't be perfect. Well, when when the excavators, you know, when they when they backfill inside here and they compact and they, they have lasers set up and they check it, and usually they do get it within, you know, maybe a half an inch as far as being perfectly level so you know they're shooting for six inches down from top of the concrete wall there because they know they're going to put two inches of styrofoam so four inches for the concrete two inches for the styrofoam well when when the excavators get it graded perfect so what happens next is when the plumbers come in they have to dig trenches in there for the plumbing to get the right slope you know on their plumbing tubes that are down in the ground I mean, some of those trenches, they might be a foot deep, they might be 18 inches deep, depending on 
how much of a run they have to have on that that plumbing to get the right slope to wherever it's wherever it's going. So they dig those trenches, they put the plumbing in, you know, the plumbing inspector comes and inspects the plumbing. Once that's fine, they, they refill those trenches. And on this job, the excavator didn't come back to refill the trenches, the, the GC did. So, you know, they rake the concrete, they rake the dirt back in the trench, they pack it down, and sometimes it, it doesn't, they don't get it checked perfect. So it may end up being a little bit higher than it was before, and then if you don't check it and get it perfect, when you go to lay those those two inch boards of rigid insulation over something that has even the tiniest little hump in it in the subgrade, you know they're four foot by eight foot sheets. And that tends to add up a little bit, and then the subgrade the subgrade ends up being a little bit out of level, a little bit more out of level than it should be, you know. So it makes it makes when you're dumping the concrete down, you know, if you dump four inches of concrete down every day for floors like this. You, you know pretty much you know where you need to go without even checking it with a laser because you've all, you always dump four inches of concrete. Well, when the subgrade is, is kind of out of level, it goes up and down, it gets thinner, it gets thicker here and there, then that's, that's what I mean by struggling to get it down. And that's why sometimes using the fiber screed like this is a heck of a lot easier than hand screeding because it's just uh, where the subgrade's out of level, it makes it harder to screed by hand. You can see that went down pretty easy right there, and then I'm shrinking this little bay up, and then I'll turn the screed again, and, and we'll we'll screed our way right out of here. But when Luke goes over it with the bull float right here, you can see how nice and flat that is again. He's kind of crossing. He's going 90 degrees of the way I screeded, so if there was a little hump or a dip in there, you'd, you'd, it would really show up. But it seems to be really good and flat, so that's that's... I mean, that's what we're used to. That's, we do it every day, so that's what we expect out of it when we do it. You, you know, if, if you're new to it, it might, it might be a little bit different results, but that's what we do every single day. All right, we got one little tiny thing in the garage we got to finish up, a little hole in there they want us to fill. It is still pretty chilly. I mean, the sun's coming up. It's supposed to be 40, but look at all that ice. I don't know what's worse, pouring when it's 90 degrees or 100 degrees in high humidity or pouring when it's well below freezing and the wind's blowing they're both pretty bad let me know what do you guys think is worse i'd pick freezing i'd rather be hot and warm any day than fingers froze you can't feel them that's just me though guess i've worked out in too many of these winters for too long my body just can't take the ice cold weather anymore. Now, if you're wondering why we didn't do that little piece when we did do the garage floor, they uh, they box that little piece out, and the plumbing wasn't in there when we did the garage. But they they just wanted to get the garage floor done because it was it was pretty much ready to go. Everything else was ready to go. It was a nice day, and they wanted just to get that in there while the day was nice. So they they had to bore some holes through the wall in the house to get this pump those two pipes in there. I don't know what they're for. Maybe it's, maybe there's a bathroom in the garage, something like that. But they just boxed it out and figured they'd just do it when we did the house floor like we're doing right now. So that's the reason we didn't do that little piece right there when we did the garage. All right, that'll do it. 2,200 square feet. Got set up pretty good already. So shouldn't be here too, too long today. Just got to get it flat, smooth, so they can put wood flooring over it. No saw cuts today. Uh, just power trial smooth and we're out of here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.